Hello and welcome to the Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. This is the EU US edition for January 19th, 2023. Uh, today, it uh, looks like myself, Bruno Verachten, and Mark Waite are uh, joint uh, rounding out the uh, group here. And for the agenda, a um, couple action items to highlight uh, updates about the uh, most recent weekly and next LTS release. Uh, update about Debian 12 and what that means for Jenkins documentation and usage. Uh, just a, a reconfirmation on the website component being completed. Uh, returning to our discussion from last week about handling regressions on Jenkins.io and how that can, if there's any nuances or uh, uh, additions to that. Um, something I was discussing with Mark is creating documentation for detached plugins. Uh, maybe even a specific detached plugins, plugins page where we can house all these. Um, there's been a couple recently, WM, Windows WMI agents um, being most recent uh, and others. And eventually over time, things will uh, grow old and need to be removed or moved and separated. And so uh, some discussion on that uh, and a few pull requests of note that, um, again, we had a couple last week to highlight and just added a couple more to make sure that uh, we have the discussion if it needs. Uh, is there anything else that we need to go on the agenda today, or does that cover things for everyone? Well, okay. I just realized one that we may want to put on a future agenda is mm -hmm. the the Google Summer of Code project ideas for docs that, that are affecting docs. So I wouldn't put it on today's because I've not not adequately prepared, but I think we ought to put it on because we owe it to ourselves to look at the project ideas, discuss them, think about them, and, and be sure that they're well vetted so that if a, a new contributor wants to offer mm -hmm. a plan for that, we give them a good starting point. Yeah, definitely. And um, I know that there are there's a couple projects specifically for documentation, like moving to the site generator and screenshot automation. Um, and I actually, I'm planning on being part of the the mentor group for these. Um, so yeah, I also have vested interest in it and making sure that it goes well. So we should definitely talk about that next week, for sure. Cool, thank you very much, Mark. Uh, on to the agenda. So uh, as far as the docs mailing list goes, this has now been archived, it's read only. And we have the docs Gitter channel for communication. That is shorter communication questions, need help, anything like that. Uh, and we also have community.jenkins.io, which is for more discourse, conversation, discussion, uh, in-depth topics that we really want to uh, share on and, and collaborate and, and expand on. Um, so there are multiple places to still get in touch. Uh, and the mailing list is still available. It's just in a read-only format. So if there are any reasons to check that out, you still can. Uh, and then for blog posts, we recently had our 2022 recap blog posts published. Um, I know we mentioned it last week, but just again, thank you to everyone that worked on this. This was a lot of work and a lot of collaboration that resulted in a really nice highlight of Jenkins in 2022. Um, thanks to Bruno, thanks to Alyssa Tong uh, and several other contributors who worked on uh, all of the information that was in there and getting it together. Uh, and then speaking of Google Summer of Code, uh, Jean-Marc Nissen has written a blog post on being a mentor for Google Summer of Code that outlines a lot of what goes into being a mentor, uh, some expectations and uh, thoughts behind it. Uh, it's a really great resource to consider and check up on for any sort of mentorship, whether it's Google Summer of Code or something else. Uh, so definitely uh, take a minute if you have. And um, if you're interested at all in Google Summer of Code, we still are definitely accepting applications for mentorship and other, uh, other aspects of it where we still have plenty of time to go and Google, the Summer of Code doesn't officially start until uh, the end of April, begin, uh, the end of May-ish. So um, we have lots of time to work on these things, contribute, get familiarized with stuff. Uh, so again, any time you have, it's a good idea. Uh, Next up, we have the releases. So we had re weekly release 2.387 this week, which released successfully. So everything's all good and uh, fine there. Mark, thank you again for handling the uh, change log on that. And then uh, for our next LTS release, we have uh, 2.375.3. Uh, that'll be happening on February 8th. Uh, I've already created the change log and upgrade guide. So that link is available here. 
uh, for any reviews. It's a smaller update, um, just as in previous ones that were 0 0.2, 0 0.3. So uh, not a ton, but still there. And I would still appreciate any feedback. Uh, next item on the list is the Debian 12 release. Um, and so Debian 12's release, which is planned for April 2023, or uh, getting close to that point, is going to deliver on uh, JDK, Open JDK 17, not JDK, Open JDK 11. Um, Jenkins already supports Gen uh, Java 11 and 17, so this isn't an issue uh, in that sense. And with Java 17 being the future and, and you know, current uh, recommendation, we're, we're going to move towards that as well and make sure that the Jenkins documentation is highlighting Java 17 as the way to go and uh, the best method for usage so that all the functionalities are there, um, proper steps, proper actions are taking, instructions make sense and apply correctly across the board. Um, just all the benefits that would come along with having that update available will be felt across the documentation as well. Yes. Um, and so, go ahead, Mark. Well, on that one, that that uh, Red Hat Universal Base Image topic there, maybe you could mm -hmm. go ahead and open that. Yeah. Um, a contributor from Red Hat has submitted a proposal recommending that we add a Docker container image for the Red Hat Universal Base Image 9. We already ship one for Universal Base Image 8. And 9 has now released. It's been released for quite a while. We're now on 9.1. And, and so... I think it's a good idea. I think this is the right approach. But the question to the contributor was, is it intentional that you're doing Java 11? Shouldn't we consider here doing Java 17 as the container image? And and the one of the key sponsors, Oliver Goncha, is who also was our release officer many for many years, so uh, very experienced with Jenkins, et cetera, said, oh yeah, we'll probably need Java 17 pretty soon. Maybe we should just make this one Java 17. So for me, my preference is let's make this one Java 17, not that it's required, not that it's mandatory, but doing Java 11 on the brand new Red Hat operating system, UBI 9, uh, feels backwards. Let's do Java 17 as the first preference that way it's it's leading out so that when, as we make the transition in April or May to more actively documenting Java 17 in more places, it's just a natural part of that. And that's all that you can put that away now, Kevin. Thank you. Okay, thanks Mark. Great. And um, yeah, no, I appreciate that Mark. Thanks for pro uh, providing all the context and uh, kind of background to that. So, uh, Amazing, and uh, yeah, keep an eye out for that. Uh, next up here on the agenda, uh, just a note again, the website component on Jira has been completed, so there are no more uh, Jenkins.io website tickets on the Jenkins Jira. Those are in GitHub now, being in, in the GitHub issues tracker, uh, and from here on out, that's where the, they'll be uh, submitted to. So uh, that's taken care of. We're uh, already, yeah, let's go, that's taken care of. Um, next on the list is how we handle regressions on Jenkins.io. Uh, this is something that we discussed last week, talking about how uh, the Jenkins core team handles regressions and how they go about resolving them or reverting them, depending on what needs to happen. Uh, and we checked out some examples. Uh, recently, the Jumb Jumbotron uh, is not currently rotating, uh, and the sponsor images had been sized a little uh, incorrectly. So these are things that may not have been site breaking or impactful to many users. They did take a little bit longer to come onto our radar. But uh, the fact of the matter is these are regressions that we're that people are experiencing and we have to make sure that we're taking care of these properly. Uh, we went and created labels uh, for major regression and regression so that when these are submitted in the issue tracker, we know just how severe it could be. If it's absolutely breaking, if it's super minor if it's you know uh, and anything in between so uh also talked about using the same process as core where if it is breaking reverting it um within a couple hours less than a day i want to say mark if i'm not mistaken um and then depending on the severity of the issue we can assess from there we can figure out what needs to happen and prioritize accordingly 
Um, it's not something that is set in stone right now because we are just starting to adapt this. So um, yeah, this is super open for feedback and ideas. And uh, if anyone has um, preferences or uh, previous experiences that might lend themselves to this sort of thing, I'm more than happy to hear. Um, Mark, did you have anything you wanted to add for the uh, regressions on Jenkins.io? Nope. Stuff? I think okay. I think we've got a, a good plan there. We may ultimately want to document that in the contributing guide. In fact, I think we will want to put it in the contributing guide for Jenkins.io. That's, mm -hmm. that's where it ultimately belongs, I think. But for right now, um, let's keep working out what we what we agree on and then we can put it into the contributing guide later. It's the contributing guide is the formal documentation location for it. For me, mm -hmm. this is a good excuse to discuss it, to talk with European contributors, to talk with contributors from Asia. And after we get through a little bit of discussion, then we formalize it as a pull request to the contributing guide. Great. That's how, that makes sense. That sounds like a good plan. So, yeah, awesome. Uh, next up on the agenda, uh, so this is something that I was talking to Mark about uh, just prior to the meeting. Uh, there are detached plugins that exist within Jenkins, um, Windows WMI agents, Oracle JDK tool. Uh, and there are more on the list here, of course. You can see software configuration management plugins, authentication plugins, miscellaneous build tool plugins. Like there's a lot of, uh, there are a handful of detached plugins that could be more noticeable to folks than others, depending on their use case. Uh, but ultimately, um, if these are detached, folks or users are gonna be curious as to how they can remove them themselves or separate those things out themselves. Um, if they're running an older version of Jenkins as their baseline, they may not have noticed, but the second they update, they're gonna notice. Um, there needs to be some sort of not formal instruction, but we, we should give insight as to what's going on, a little background and how to take care of this on um, for a user. So yeah. go ahead, Mark. I, I was just gonna, I was gonna offer a, a description of a case that a, mm -hmm. a, a real Jenkins user may encounter. So I'm a Jenkins user running on Windows. Mm -hmm. I've got the most recent long-term support or the most recent, you don't have to put it, the notes in there, okay. Kevin, just, just I'm running, I'm running on Windows. So I've got a controller on Windows. It, it's meeting my needs. It's doing exactly what I want. Um, I use Windows Active Directory for authentication, but I can't uninstall the PAM authentication plugin because I'm dependent on another plugin that has an old Jenkins base version, an old Jenkins minimum version, and it makes the PAM authentication plugin an implied dependency. So now I'm stuck with PAM off, which is a very Unix thing, right? I know I will never use it on my Windows controller, never. But I can't uninstall it because the implied dependency on these other plugins that are have an old baseline, but I need them. And, and so that, that story is a bad story for the user, or I absolutely know I'm never gonna use subversion. I know it. And yet, because I have some old plugin installed, I have to, I have to also install, I have to also have subversion installed. So it's just, it's unhealthy for Jenkins administrators to have plugins installed that they don't use. But these split out plugins, they can't remove them because if they remove them, they come back the next time they restart. <laughs> So yeah. it's it's that's that story of detached plugins and and there are lots of complications hiding there that WMI agents is just the first. If mm -hmm. someone were to deprecate the CBS plugin, there would be a lot of WMI agent style angst out in the world. They would say, but CBS is actually not used very often anymore as a source control system, right? There just aren't many projects that use it. So, so you could say, hey, somebody might deprecate it. They may say, we're not maintaining this thing, or maybe a critical problem is discovered that it's got a security issue in it and no one fixes it. 
Now you get a report in Jenkins that says, this plugin has a known vulnerability. You try to remove it. And it says, I'm sorry, you can't remove it because there's this implied dependency. So there are lots of dangers in this in these split plugins that haven't shown yet. WMI agents is only the first, but this place has some has some risks in it. Got it. Thank you very much, Mark. Sorry, that long, helps. long, boring discussion, but oh, that makes sense. That helps clarify. It's better, way better to give uh, some real context to it in a, in a real situation that someone might find themselves yeah. in. That's uh, not boring. That's real. That's more important. So, yeah, no, I appreciate it. And um, yeah, and like I said, that this is still this is very much just preliminary ideas. Uh, mm -hmm. There's other plugins or anything that anyone has, they've run into something they have an idea for, they have maybe some insider knowledge of what might be going on as far as deprecation, like anything at all. The discussion is here. We're more than happy to listen and share. And again, op we're open to anything. And then uh, last thing on my list here on the agenda is just pull requests of note. Um, again, a couple of these were, uh, we talked about last week. Um, the updating Jenkins guide that uh, Vandit has submitted. And thank you to Vandit for some, all these submissions lately. Uh, a lot of work being uh, taken on and it's it's kind of impressive in uh, every sense of the word. Um, but uh, Vandit wanted to add a, a guide on how to actually update Jenkins. Um, on Linux, mostly, I think there might've been a couple, uh, yeah, Windows as well. Um, this is a lot of content and a lot of, um, information to add to the Jenkins documentation. Um, I know that I'm still going through and Mark's going to go be going through and reviewing and uh, suggesting anything that we need to so that this can go smoothly and be added smoothly. Um, anyone else is welcome to review. The pull request is open. Um, any ideas or feedback is appreciated on there. Uh, and then uh, another user I forget who exactly, Hector Vito had submitted a pull request about adding a light TPD reverse proxy. Um, I reviewed it documentation wise. Uh, I'm not an expert in reverse proxies by any means. So uh, I had asked Mark to assist with some of the review on that. And if anyone else wants to check it out and go through the instructions, see if everything works out for them, um, by all means, it's much appreciated. And uh, third, fourth, fifth set of eyes never hurts. Uh, and then um, this pull request here is one that actually came into uh, the Docker repo. Uh, and this is about uninstalling a plugin uh, through Docker or with Docker. I forget Mark exactly. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and what the author has done is they've documented how to uninstall plugins in multiple with multiple techniques. The challenge is that the technique I haven't I got to review it again, but the technique they used for Docker has has failure modes where it doesn't work as expected, and and it's because uninstalling a plug in a Docker container is more complicated. Got it. So yeah, okay. so it yeah. Sorry, uh, and even worse than that, uh, it's also describing a technique with um, the Jenkins client, uh, which is supposed to remove plugins, except that the commands which are listed do not exist to my knowledge. So I don't know what to do with that. Well, I, yeah, and I, I think, I believe the author has removed that reference. So I think okay. I think that part's okay now because saying saying that there's a command line that is, doesn't exist, okay, that's bad. <laughs> but but the other, it just needs more, more review and yeah, somebody who's back. familiar with Docker to try it and see, does the instruct, do the instructions work as given? Yeah, my fault. I have to review it once again and try the comments once again. Uh, I should have done it this week, but it got out of my mind. Sorry. No worries, bro. And um, I think the, the main thing that I wanted to mention on this is that if this, you know, if this does work out and this is submitted and merged eventually, uh, that is documentation that would have to make its way over to Jenkins.io as well. So mm -hmm. uh, not immediate effect, but down the line, that will be something that we should consider um, and plan on moving over or at least uh, including in the Jenkins documentation. Uh, and then uh, ultimately, 
Uh, this pull request was actually, um, well, it's still open, uh, but it's closer to being approved and merged than not. Um, we were taking, uh, Vandy again had submitted another pull request to add some content, um, this time to the pipeline syntax reference. And when adding this parameter information, uh, we looked at it and said, this seems like it's getting a little more than what the syntax page should represent or share. Uh, and so Mark made the suggestion that, hey, why don't we take that and put it somewhere else? Where would we be able to put it? Where can we add that in? Because that does help give insight to this. So um, talking about maybe having a parameter page or a page specifically for these uh, sort of things, because while I've found documentation for things like the environment variables, um, not so much as parameters. And so, well, obviously we want to make sure this this is, well, the Jenkins documentation is thorough and informative. So, well, and, and parameterized builds have some interesting, interesting cases that are worth discussion. One of mm -hmm. them that Vandi discussed was what happens if I name, add two arguments, and the two arguments have the same name. So I add a twice. All mm -hmm. right, that's that's a don't do that. But if you do, what happens? And, and those kinds of things that are much broader than just pipeline syntax, right? That's any parameterized job has that characteristic. And there are other cases, what happens if I define a parameterized job in the Jenkins file? What happens when I'm using that Jenkins file inside a standard pipeline project, not a multi-branch? There are, there are some interesting cases. And they, as you said, Kevin, they all all deserve a different place than in pipeline syntax. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mark. Um, that helps explain the, the idea and everything a lot more. Um, and yeah, like I said, I and, and we've talked about this too, and that the syntax page should be a quick reference, not an extended uh, book about these these matters. Um, that's what the rest of the documentation is for. So uh, we can utilize that to its fullest extent. Okay, and that actually covers for the agenda I had. Uh, just to make sure, is there anything anyone else wanted to talk about, mention, share? Nope. All right, great. Okay, then. Uh, I will go ahead and stop the recording. It'll be available in about 24 to 48 hours. And thank you again for... Oh. Yes, okay. stop the recording, definitely. The reminder is I haven't posted the last docs office hours yet either. Yeah. No so, so I will get that posted, both of them. All right.